Alright, so this time I want to make some Pikmin Custom Cave sublevels. Uh, but before we start, I do want to go over some little basic things. If you press Alt W, you can switch between your views like this, and you know T's for top, uh, and you can move around the camera here, or you can use Alt Middle Click. Middle Click is also panning. Move around the camera with this. Ah, but uh, also. Let's go ahead and make a shape here real quick. Ooh. <laughs> so, F1's annoying. It brings you to the help menu, <laughs> which opens up in your browser. F2 shows you... Here, let's make this a edible poly real quick. F2 highlights your polys when they're selected. F3 is wireframe. F2 and F3 can be combined and F4 shows the wireframe on the solid object. I like to have it in F4 a lot, but you know, it just depends on what you're doing. You, it's helpful to be able to switch through them all. But, so, start, I like to think, I like to go into top view. Uh, T will give you the most pre precise measuring there. And a lot of this is more freeform, so I'll go ahead and place down a plane here. Um, if you want, uh, 170 by 170 is a single map unit in Pikmin, but uh, I don't really worry too much about the scale until later typically. So this is good. Let's go ahead and make an edible poly. That's what is easiest to work with in my opinion. Let's go here. I think I'll center it around... oh wait. Uh, yeah, we'll center it around zero. That'll, it's not necessary, but I think it'll be handy. Um, not... yeah. Going back to home, I wasn't really feeling the, the grid like that. So, what I'll do is I'll open up my freeform tab here. This is pretty easy. I have it set to grid. Let's just make a floor layout first. So what we have here is like, it's where the ship will be. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and say we want to make a hallway out this way. So clicking step build, we'll place vertices in these little patterns of four like this. And you can just kind of build like that, and then when you hold shift and you click, you can just drag through them to create the quads. And this is building this all on Z equals zero, the bottom plane area there. And, you know, uh, I like to keep, you know, uh, I don't just make the quads for no real good reason or whatever, but because you need to have a certain amount of polygons because the lighting is by polygon kind of. So if we go over to your to the shift tool, this is pretty helpful. I like to click on vertices when I do this. And you can change the center strength here and the outer strength. If you hold control, you can change the fall off. If you hold shift, you can control the, the strength in the center there. And this is really good if you need to just kind of form things a bit. Maybe my fall off could be a little bit more. I like to have it a little precise when I'm just working with stuff like this. But we can go ahead, do this, try and make kind of smooth lines here. Keep the keep everything nice and this is just me you know this is going to be like an overhead view of a Pikmin cave so you know I'm just keeping that in mind as I make it and then so now we have this shape what we can do is we can go to border and now select this whole empty area in here going back to modeling do like a cat poly here why not and then you can you can connect things like this but I think 
a pretty good option is to use the inset tool. And I'll inset until I see that vertices are getting pretty close together around the bend. So you'll see around here. And what I'll do is, oh, pardon me. I'll take the vertices and I will collapse them. You know, uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, that's it, right? I mean, these are close enough. I'm just going to collapse these two. You know, there's a decent amount of stuff to just kind of form a good shape here now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mm, collapse these also. And we can do these. We'll just select all of these. I think it'll be fine. I'm not going to mess with this much more. Connect. Okay, no, that's terrible. We don't want it to connect like that. We want it to connect like this. So sometimes you just got to do your own manual selections for the connections. Maybe I want to collapse these just to save a polygon, I don't know, <laughs> I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but, you know, I, well, once you start working larger and larger, you know, it's probably gonna help. Now, I think, you know, I've got this here, let's make this all a little bit more area, we'll say like, oh, the ship will be over here, we'll put a cave over here, maybe a guy with a key there. It's just a very simple sub-level. But, uh, say I want more shape to this area, I can go ahead and chamfer here, and I'll make those parts there, which, you know, that creates more of a curve as you do it. You could even do it there, wherever I find, like, the edges are kind of sharp. And that creates its own little try if it's on a, uh, like when it's on a <coughs> vertex like that. And that's probably better than just doing it with an empty vertex, because then, you know, this is going to form triangles like that, and that can be kind of messy to deal with, but I'm going to ignore it for now. It's not that big of a deal. So let's see. This is our ground, but let's say I want... I want like a pool of water over here. So I'll select these polys and I'll go to, you see this is not going to, because if I want to lower it or heighten it or do what, whatever with that, oh wait, whoop. Higher. Let's just bring it up like that. You see, that's not going to create a really smooth up like that. So why don't we do this and connect these. And I'll take this and remove it. Now it should be pretty smooth. And if I want to, I can even make it a bit smoother like this. And then we can select those polygons. And that's going to be... Oh. <laughs> Oops. Uh, when you're modeling with the freeform thing, you might want to be in top-down view so that you don't accidentally move your parts like that. But we can fix that if we just select everything and we go back to modeling. We can put it to the Z or to the grid. Uh, now I'll flatten it out. But now let's say I want this part in the water like I was saying. So I'll bring it down a little bit. And I like to work on the floor and get all the heights with the floor and everything done before I really go on to the walls. <coughs> but I would say, you know, there's the water area, we'll put a cave here, maybe there's a enemy you need blue Pikmin to fight in their ships over there. So let's grab the border now. And division surf whatever. Uh, if you hold shift 
and drag this up, we can create walls just like that. Now if we go into our polygons, I'm going to go ahead and do a loop to select all the walls here. And I'm going to set their ID to 2 on this polygon material IDs. And that's basically because... Let's add some materials on here. We'll put like this cave stone wall dealio there. And uh, for these polygon one, it, it would be kind of annoying to try and select them all, right? But if I just select ID, all the polygons in ID one, just like that, I'll throw down my dirt texture. Uh, yeah, let's see here, and then. There you go. When you're in here, uh, if you select this show shaded material and viewport, and that's how you can get it to show. So that doesn't look very good as it is right now. Our original plane looks pretty alright. So why don't we select? We'll do this, and I'll select the ID here, and I'll go to the unwrap UV W modifier, and I have them all selected if I remember correctly. Or, maybe I didn't select them. Oops. Hold up. Let's go ahead and select ID1. What? Okay, there we go. Got it working now. So let's go unwrap. Open up the UV editor. And we'll select them all like that. And you'll see they're kind of put on there. And if you go here, you can select this to show the mud. Uh, but what we need to do, we'll simply, we'll do a reset peel, and that'll work pretty well, but the texture is kind of, well, it looks pretty, <laughs> what do you call it, I don't know, small, large, so we'll resize it, since this is scalable, you can kind of see the scaling there. But we'll resize it, and I think that's at a pretty good size. No one's going to be able to really see the creases in the, in the in the seamless, the seams in the seamless, because you can kind of tell still. But uh, I think that's a good height for that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and edit, go back, convert it to edit poly again, and I'm going to select ID two, and let's go ahead and unwrap again. Select the polygons here. And we'll peel again, but this time... There's messing up in the corners, you see. So, if what you want to do, let's grab one of these, and let's just go ahead and... Uh, break the stitch? How do I... <laughs> oh, here we go. So, we'll do that. And then let's select all the polygons again. And let's... Uh, no? Wait. Uh, well, this works if you do the pattern like this. And then you can... But still, you know, look, this guy's sideways. What's up with that? <laughs> I'm trying to remember how to do this better. I think if we select half of them and peel, what does that do for us? Okay. So, we can do half and half, and that works pretty well. And that should give us, you know, not any of those awkward sideways ones. Now, we're doing pretty good here, and I think real quick, I'll well, let's convert it back to an edible poly for now. And then let's grab the border here. We already have it grabbed from last time. And I'm going to go ahead and shift click. Uh, oh, well, I'm going to change to edge. Or er, wait, oh. I mean, here, it's here too. So shift click extrude. Uh, I do not want the width set to anything at all so it's equal and then I'm going to go oh uh, press the wrong buttons or something uh, 
I want to make this a negative 10 and so that that faces out backwards here and then what I can do there is go back to our moving tool shift go down down below the base of the floor preferably and then these we have that selected which I do not need that selected but let's do this for now where we loop this and we'll loop this as well and we'll set these to material 3 and that's particularly because I want it to be easy to select this layer in case I need to make changes to it in the future because once I you know put everything I try it up and then I put it in game and I mess around with it and I say okay well this isn't really what I want then uh, it's gonna become more of a bother to deal with this stuff and texturing and all that but so let's go ahead and select these and then down here or up here the color will want to go ahead and I just drag it all the way to black there and Oh, yes, and go to your object properties and click vertex channel display to turn that on. Uh oh, looks like some. <laughs> well, let's see here. This looks like it just got mixed in with the wrong crowd or whatever. So, turning it back to white, fully white, that returns it to its normal state. I don't know why those got selected, but either way. Now we have that, and if you have coloring on, you know, this will look fine in a cave. Uh, let's also add this effect though. If we come here and we, well, let's grab the vertices and let's loop those. So now we have all these vertices selected. We also want a little bit of shading effect on the walls because that's cool, you know. And then. Again, similar thing if you want, you can loop it around with that, and then we can, well, not particularly with the vertices, but with these, if we loop them around. Uh, sometimes your loops don't work as good as they used to. But, so now we have all those selected, we can go ahead and chamfer that a bit for bit of a nice little detail here. We'll select that. That doesn't seem to have gotten selected. And then that'll help make the place look a little bit nicer too. And, you know, that's what you gotta do to make it in Max. And then here's the thing also about this. So now this would be a, a view model, but you want your, collect your collision to be a little bit less oh I pressed the F1 button again whoops uh oh so, so what do we do oh it looks like these ended up becoming ID1 I wanted them to be ID3 let's see huh weird I guess the IDs got so, like uh, reset or they didn't really work too well in there okay so that's how that happened so just be careful, be cognizant of what's going on with your model. It looks like we have everything selected here that we want now, so I'll make these ID3. Okay, cool. So now, this would be your view model, but for your collision model, you would want to have less polygons. So what you can do is delete that, because no one sees your collision model, and you can just drag the... Oh, that'll happen uh, when your model starts to <sighs> when your model starts to mess up like this what you have to do is you have to go to the modifier list and put your edit poly over this and then you can work in this level it's pretty much the same thing except you can't do the vertex colors on that level you have to do it in this level but so like this is good this is what we'll use for collision 
convert it back to the edible poly whatnot. And that's my guide on how to make a simple little Pikmin cave area. Uh, you can get more intricate with it. Maybe I'll uh, show more videos like how to make tubes and stuff like that that are fun to add into a Pikmin sub-level. But thank you for watching.